What is up everybody and welcome to another video. In today's video I wanted to talk a little bit about a sort of contentious topic, which is that of Balasong beaters versus Balasong safe queens, and what each means, what each is, and what you're allowed to do with your Balasongs. Um, for this video, at least right now, I am flipping my Basilisk R Premium Edition. This is a fully gold PVD coated Basilisk R with a black blade and carbon fiber spacers. And honestly, this thing flips amazingly well. However, this thing is also incredibly fragile. Uh, like, it's not that bad because PVD coating is actually a pretty good way of uh, getting a gold color on your Balasong. This is a lot better than just a gold colored uh, titanium anodization. There's actually some science to how this co uh, coating hangs on to the outside of the titanium and how it works and stuff like that. But suffice it to say, uh, this is the same way that Squid Industries makes the their inked blades uh, with their blackened blades, and it's the same way that this blade is also blackened uh, using PVD coating. So it's a very hardy coating, but at the same time, it's still one of those things where the whole point of this Balasong is not necessarily that it's a good flipper, though it is a very good flipper. No, instead, the idea of this Balasong is obviously that, well, it's beautiful. You know, it's a very... Uh, funky looking, beautiful designed Balasong. Uh, Jerry Hom has released a number of these sort of premium editions of his products in the past, uh, with uh, notable ones being some of the all gold and all black editions. Um, I was lucky enough to get this sort of black and gold colorway that I really, really enjoy. Um, but it's not one that I find myself flipping too often, and there's a couple reasons behind that. First of all, obviously, is, well, I mean, it's definitely something that's meant to be looked at rather than necessarily, like, flipped a lot. Uh, you can see that it is, you know, literally made of gold to a degree, and so, like, it's obvious that the primary function of this thing is aesthetics. But, on top of that, I think something else that's important here is that uh, the Jerry Home Basilisk R is known for also having an incredibly fragile tip. As you can see, the tip of this thing, the actual uh, material that is there, gets so thin that, like, the entire tip of this thing is prone to cracking off the moment that you drop it the first time. And so the fact that I'm out here flipping it outside over ground that has, like, rocks and stuff in it, if I was to drop this thing, it would probably almost instantaneously get tipped. So that's just something to know about the Basilisk uh, series of knives, uh, or the Bas the Bass R series of knives, is that the tip is incredibly fragile, uh, notably so. But at the same time, you know, it's not something that would keep me from flipping a Balasong like that. You know, I am definitely a proprietor of the idea of having you know, beautiful Balasongs. I do love a good, beautiful knife, but at the same time, I'm also not necessarily against actually using one of my beautiful Balasongs to, you know, do something like flipping, whereas some people would rather keep their Balasong in a safe, and these are known as safe queens. Safe queens are the kind of people who are essentially just collecting Balasongs to have them, and not necessarily to flip them. Uh, they want to have a pristine collection of all of these, you know, maybe original Balasongs in the original packaging or uh, in their original condition, making sure that it's like as nice as possible and as, as pristine as possible. And honestly, it's something that I don't fully connect with in the sense of like, I don't really feel that way about my Balasongs. You know, I would rather flip them than just keep them pristine. But it's also not something that I don't understand. You know, I can absolutely understand the desire of having your Balasongs uh, simply just as historical pieces or something to look at or something to be enjoyed from a visual aspect, because many of them are, in fact, quite beautiful. Uh, I could say something very similar about my alien, or I could say something very similar about my tsunami, right? These are very beautiful handcrafted balasongs that have a lot of interesting history to them. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean that they're like 
you know, something that should be kept in a safe, but it's also not a reason that they shouldn't, right? Like, just because they were meant to be flipped doesn't mean that somebody can't take pride and enjoyment about the fact that they have a pristine collection of beautiful objects and, you know, don't even necessarily feel a desire to flip them. A desire to flip a balisong is not inherent uh, to collecting them, nor is a desire to use any object inherent to the collecting of that object, right? Like, you can do either. It's totally okay. Um, alongside that, I think uh, the other end of the spectrum is people who intentionally beat their ballast songs, right? Um, people who intentionally uh, take their ballast songs and flip them all over the place and, you know, will like throw them into concrete and stuff like that. And to some degree, I think that that is fueled partially by just a desire to be uh, different, right? You know, um, I think people are annoyed about the fact that people safe queen certain ballast songs, and I can understand why. But at the same time, I think the defiant act of taking this beautiful ballast song that people, you know, really, really love and really, really want, and then throwing it into the concrete probably does bring some people a sort of uh, feeling of like, you know, oh, I have this and uh, I can do this with it because, you know, I can. Um, and I can't knock that either. Like, if you want to drop your ballast songs and do all that stuff, more power to you because that's how I treat almost all of my ballast songs. You know, I do carry them with me. I take my expensive ballast songs around and I drop them on concrete. However, I think for me, the only difference really comes into, like... I don't totally get the videos that are just gore porn for ballast songs, right? Like, if you're taking your ballast song and just intentionally hurling it into concrete over and over again, I guess if that makes you happy, then uh, sure, you know, more power to you. Like, I can't knock you for that. But I do find it kind of weird <laughs> to just, like, that be your thing. You just, you just take your ballast song and kind of throw it into concrete a lot. It's like, because it, all you're doing is potentially, you know, lessening the value if you did want to resale that ballast song at some point. Um, and, like, obviously, if it's a compilation of somebody flipping and they're dropping it into the concrete over and over again, then that's, you know, like, great, honestly. Like, that's that's what I do. I, <laughs> I literally flip my ballast songs and drop them in the concrete all the time. I just think that there's a difference when it's like a video of you flipping it and you're dropping it versus like you're literally just taking a video of you throwing your knife into concrete over and over again. I don't know. I just don't fully vibe with that idea. Uh, I don't think it's like, you know, truthfully, I don't think it's a problem. Like, really, I believe you can do whatever you want with your ballast songs and like nobody should really be able to tell you how to live your life. So, you know, I, I get it. You know, if you want to do that and that's like, if that makes you happy, then that's great. Um, but if you're just doing it to get a reaction out of people, then I'm like, well, why? You know, like all you're doing is just making people mad at you potentially. Um, you know, if you're only doing this to create a reaction, then why do it at all? You know, I guess if you like the attention, then that's that's fine or whatever. Um, you know, that's why I make these videos. I like the attention, so you know, I can't <laughs> I can't judge too much. Um, but I just I, I feel like there is a difference between beating your knife in terms of like utilizing it and dropping it, and you know, you can get a really grimy beat up knife because you use it all the time. The same way, like I go through pairs of shoes like nobody's business because I'm always using them and walking around in like weird locations that I probably shouldn't be in the middle of the woods, or I'm dancing in them and rubbing them against concrete constantly and like, you know, causing really big problems for my shoes. So they fall apart relatively quickly. And I can understand how that can happen to someone who flips all the time and, you know, is clumsy and drops their knife a lot or whatever. But, um, when it comes to a ballast song that you have, that you bought, and now you're just like making videos, throwing it into the concrete just to like get a rise out of people, that I'm just like, eh, I don't know. feels weird. Um, not, not my cup of tea personally, but yeah. Um, on top of that, safe queens, like, I really don't care about safe queens at all. I don't, I don't think it's a problem, because, like, people can enjoy things, and they don't have to do the action that you associate with that thing to enjoy it. You know, everybody can enjoy anything in different ways. And as I was saying, like, if you in genuinely enjoy having a ballast song, 
and then throwing it into the concrete, then that's great. You know, like I, that's, that's fine. I, it's just when you do it specifically to get a rise out of people, that's when I'm like, I don't like the idea of making content just to annoy other people, right? Like that just, that just kind of sucks to me. Um, so yeah, that's just kind of my thoughts. Um, you know, I do find those videos funny sometimes, but just like in general, they just kind of rub me the wrong way. Um, and I thought I'd talk a little bit about it, especially now that I have like a few ballast songs that I think people would consider things that you would want to keep a safe queen. Like, you know, I, I, I own a number of quote unquote safe queens, but I don't really safe queen them. Um, the only one that I kind of safe queen is really the, uh, the um, basilisk that I was flipping a minute ago. Cause like, it's just, it's honestly scary. The tip is so sharp on that thing. <laughs> That's mostly why I don't flip it, because uh, the tip on those things, not only do they break very easily, um, but they are just so sharp. And if you mess up an aerial on that thing, if you mess up an aerial on most ballast songs, like, it'll poke you, and that'll be that. Um, but on, on the Basilisk specifically, oh my god, if you mess up an aerial on that thing, the tip is going, like, in you if it has a, you know, real tip, it's just, it, it's just in you. Like, that's just the, that's just the thick and thin, man. That's just part of the life. Um, and then the other problem is if it hits the bone and then it cracks and now it's like legit in you, well, now you got a piece of metal in there and that's no fun. So anyways, yeah, just, uh, thought I'd get my thoughts out on this topic and, uh, talk a little bit about safe queens and that kind of stuff. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the moment. I thought you guys might find this kind of an interesting topic to uh talk about and uh i hope you enjoyed my perspective on it so yeah that's pretty much it for this one i'll see you later peace